And can I just say, because uh, because the the I'm I'm gonna get out ahead of this because Houston has advanced to the Final Four in a year when I've called them frauds every time Houston has come up on this program. Yes, and people are uh, I I'm I'm going to assume are going to to come to me and they're going to say, Mark, you hit or Titus, I guess is my my name mm -hmm. on, the, on this show. Uh, you have said all season that that Houston is a fraud. Explain reconcile that belief with the reality in front of us that Houston is now in the Final Four. And I want to say this. First of all, I, 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 uh, mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. hang on. Uh, no. So Houston, I've always believed in Houston's defense. Houston has always played great defense. The, the concern has always been this state is that Houston has, uh, <laughs> what do we score here? I was going to give new bloods a point, but not, then I, then I decided to waver. Houston's three, three, they be, they had three games this season against NCAA attorney teams. Mm -hmm. Three games. One was against Texas Tech in November. They beat Texas Tech. The other two were against Wichita State, who was a playing, uh, was a playing game against an eleven. Lost team. to Drake. Yes, lost yes. to Drake in a playing game. They they beat Texas. Never Tech. good to lose to Drake. They beat Texas Tech in November. They split with Wichita State. That's it. That was the those are the only NCAA tournament teams they played all season until the NCAA tournament rolls around. And what we've seen from them in, them in the NCAA tournament is literally the easiest path to a Final Four we have ever seen in the history of the NCAA tournament ever. Ever. That is not my opinion. That is numerical fact. That is empirical data. We are a Just Facts podcast. Those are the facts. Uh, and and in the second round, Rutgers had them on the ropes. Geo Baker kind of lost the ball, and, and they kind of tensed up and, and lost the game. But, you know, uh, so that's that. So, like, no, I don't really feel – like, if Houston beats Baylor, I take back everything I've said. Mm -hmm. I take it back. But I want to remind everybody, as, as we're, we're crowning Houston – that there was a moment in time when Gonzaga tried to play Houston in the, in this season, and Houston said no. This was Houston was coming off a loss to East Carolina, by the way. Yes, they lost to Tulsa, who was eleven. Shout and 12 out this to year. East Carolina because the players after that game said this was the biggest win, biggest upset in the history of basketball, and now that team makes the Final Four, so they have a little bit more credence after that. Right, because we both were like, wait a second, what? But right, it has some credence. R okay, all right, Final Four team. Final right, 14, right. shout out to the Pirates. So uh, they lose to East Carolina, and then mm -hmm. they have this gap in the schedule, and Gonzaga says, why don't we Why don't we play a game? And they say, no, we want to play Our Lady of, of the, the Lake. Of the Lake, yes. Our Lady of the Lake. Mm -hmm. And you, you said you were on board with the fraud, so I, I just want to remind you that you're you're on the ship with me. I, I am on the ship. Okay, all right, I mean, you. look, as soon as ECU beat Houston, there was a moment where I look at you and say, we got to get them tiered out right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Houston at that point was like teetering on tier one. And that was a lot, right? That that did not seem to be something that we could buy into, knowing that they lost to ECU. So, the fact that Houston got here, I will say, in the NCAA tournament, there is a climb. There is a pecking order that you have to get to. Villanova loses in 05 to North Carolina. Probably should have won that game. If you go back and watch it, Villanova. Kyle Lowry is unbelievable in that game. 2009, they also lose. Scotty Reynolds gets them in the Final Four. They also lose to North Carolina. 2016, they climb and get their redemption. Scott Drew in 2010, he loses right yeah. on the verge of the Final yeah. Four. He, this time around, it works. The second round, Houston 2018, they get robbed, and Michigan goes to the title game. So I do think that the basketball gods at some level, I'm not saying this team had to be the Final Four team or necessarily deserved it, but I do think the basketball gods looked at it and said, Houston's are in the they right. De they deserve Sam a break. Samson's are in the right. Samson is such a good basketball coach. He's been screwed over so many different times. Uh, He's a good basketball coach. He's, he's a great. He's a great basketball coach. I mean, look, the Indiana situation. We could talk about it. I, I always thought it was less than it should be. You and I have agreed on that at times, but it's still. What he was okay. All right, all right. Yeah, so yeah. here's the Indiana situation. Okay. And, uh, yeah, for the people at home. He he. The the phone calls were are now legal. Are now legal. Yes. That's so that my whole part point. of it. That's there, my whole point. There was a little more to it. But I'm going to keep it surface level. Like, I don't, the situation. I don't, yeah, Let's, yeah like, okay, the, all right. The all right, situation all right, there. All right, all right. I'm going to leave it. Just call it a situation. 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 <laughs> all I'm saying is, Samson, I can understand why the yeah. NCAA tournament basketball gods say, okay, I understand I, this I, guy should I be I will the give you this player. at least with Samson because, like, I, I think the revisionist history with, with the Indiana situation uh, is, is such that he was unfairly mm -hmm. fired. I think Samson, it, there was more to it that we don't need to get into because we've, God knows we spend too much time talking about it on the show anyway uh that that part Larry of it Brown, by the way i'm not going to argue that kelvin sampson should have never been fired or that he should have stayed at whatever uh what i will say is that the fallout from that was egregious like the 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 reaction to kelvin sampson mm -hmm. like people talking about like he'll never coach in basketball again should he ever be given a second like that was 
That was insane. Yeah, he and, was the Scarlet Letter. Yeah, People and were like, especially you're not allowed to. That coach was in anymore. 2008. Fast forward 13 years later. I mean, give, give like if you were power ranking coaches and scandals they've been involved in, does Kelvin Sampson what happened in Indiana even crack your top 50 of what we've seen in college? I mean, basketball? the only reason it does <laughs> is because, like you said, the reaction was so loud. You know what yeah. I mean? That's the only reason. And you know, you pointed out historic. This is the first team to make the Final Four without playing a single digit seed at yeah, some point. That's a, yeah, I mean, that's. It's crazy. So, uh, wow. And anyway, Samson, that that part of it, that redemption part, I, I I will I will say is is awesome for for Kelvin. We the, have the, good coaches in the Final Four: Scott Drew, Kelvin Sampson. I mean, like, are the two that we have in so far? I'm like, both those coaches should be in the Final Four. It doesn't matter who else is going. I mean, as we did yesterday, when the four teams advanced to the lead eight on the left side, there's message for the haters all up and down this That's tournament. True. That's true. All up and down this tournament. There's a lot of Mark Fuse got to win the title. Andy Infield's got to yep. prove it wasn't a one time thing. Jawan Howard has to prove he can be he can coach in college and recruit. And Mick Cronin has to prove he was the right guy for the UCLA job. So, so uh Houston in the first final four since 1984, does that do anything for you? Does that scratch any itch for you? The 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 go back well, you know, Jawan Howard is bringing back the Fab Five mm -hmm. vibe, as 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 Rostein would say. Which by the way, did Rostein had do we have an official video of Rostein uh filming the Houston team in the in the hotel? Factor tonight. I mean, he's oh, definitely going to go do it. Yeah. Great job, guys. Do we have guys. that video? <laughs> of Ross, hey, Marcus. <laughs> Q Grimes, my man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all like, what's going on, John? How you doing? <laughs> Everyone else is like, hey, John. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it does something in the sense that it brings up the, the three straight Final Fours. It reminds you that Houston um, was a perennial powerhouse for, you know, five, six, seven years in the 80s. It also reminds you that college basketball was unbelievable at that time. And if you don't yeah. think so, go look at the rosters of these teams. Uh, I mean, Michael Jordan in 1984 has himself, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Brad Darty on his team. And they lose to Dan Dockage and IU. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you look at 83. You got guys like Ralph Sampson that's playing, Akeem Olajuwon, two of the great, uh, Patrick Ewing, a guy who's going to win in 1984. Um, even when I see Samson, I think of Ralph Samson right now. But, like, in general, you bring up that time of basketball, it's good for the casual fan to say, man, college basketball, that was something then. So I like Houston doing that. I don't think there's anything beyond that that it really does, other than to say Houston basketball is quote-unquote back. Um, it does feel like a different, completely different It's a program. new blood. They're not, a, they're, they're not the old version of Houston. Yeah, it, it, is. Do, it does weirdly feel like it feels like if you told me that the school folded after the after and then five restarted, Slam and yeah. then restarted, I'd be like, yeah, that makes total sense. It, it to me is kind of like a Memphis State Memphis situation where Memphis State was a different iteration of Memphis, right? That Memphis is the new blood, Calipari Memphis, where they go to the OA title game and yeah. now they have this version with Penny and they had the Pastner era, you know, like that's the new blood Memphis. The Memphis State's the blue blood version of it. <laughs> that's all i got you are the uh you are someone asked us is is how undefeated is houston given that they never Ooh. really beat the the, the best Ooh. team they've beaten all season mm. is texas tech mm -hmm. by per inch they beat so the, so i guess wichita state was an 11 they've beat no uh Rutgers is the best team they beat by seed in the tournament so far a 10, 10. Seed. yep so going all go, throughout the entire season the best team by seed that they beat was a six seed texas tech and that was the only top 10 seed they beat all season. How undefeated does that make them right now? It makes me worry that Baylor could beat them by 20 points, yeah. you know, in the next round. That's the only thing that my only concern with Houston is that. And I do think there's enough pride there um, where they're able to avoid that. But I, it, it does give me a little bit of Oklahoma vibes where like they made the, the final four and they're like high fiving and they're like, this is we great. And then yeah. Villanova was like, well, we're trying to win the championship. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. get out of our way while we make our ride. And, You're talking uh, 2016. 2016, yeah. Yeah, yes, Villanova, yes, yes. When they won by 44 points. Uh, Villanova, Oklahoma. I, I will say the Houston, the, part of the reason I've, I've doubted Houston all season is that I only really believe in Quentin Grimes as a playmaker. I think mm -hmm. Baylor has a ton of playmakers. I think this is, this is a fantastic matchup for Baylor. Um, and, yeah, I... I Jero can muck it up. I think Sasser's got the ability to get 20 points for you. But like you said, Quentin Grimes has to have a game. Like, Quentin Grimes has to be yeah. that dude. He has to be the best player on the floor to make it sound, you know, very simplistic. But I think he has the ability to do that. But when you have a guy like Mitchell who can match up with him... I'm going to have to take the Baylor Bears. Uh, but in the meantime, congrats to Houston. This yep. is cool for college basketball. It is cool yeah, to, it's great to for Texas. have. It, it's, it's great for Jim Nance, Houston alum. Hey there. Thanks for watching Titus and Tate. For the full friend of the program experience, subscribe right below and come join us for all things college basketball. The action is heating up. Come join Titus and Tate.